I told you my, my wife has this same car, but usually it's one of the two of us driving it. Yeah. <laughs> This is the emergence of, of technologies in my mind that will allow people to be able to do more things that uh, are not highly repetitive. Yeah, I don't know about you growing up, but you know, I grew up in the era of the Jetsons. Some of you, did you watch that as a kid? I watched the Jetsons. Who George. Was George, yeah. yeah I like Jane. Yeah, Jane. I like George. Elroy. Elroy. Elroy, the kid, yeah. Right. right. And of course, they had an aero car back then. Yeah, they had that that would fly. Yeah, well, uh, this is sort of like uh, version 0 0.9 of that. Well, but all, all these things are, are uh, projected. I mean, science fiction is the way we view the future. And so we're moving into that future where we're going to have the ability to have machines help us do tasks, help yeah. us to do things. So more efficiency. Uh, in every possible way, you've been a, you know, a, a long time uh, interested in uh, science fiction. I, I know yeah. Isaac Asimov and others. Yeah. Uh, and I know I, I, I certainly grew up with iRobot being kind of one of my favorites. Right. Uh, because it was about you know human machine interfaces. W what was interesting to you about sort of the uh, Asimov, you know, world? Well, I mean, one thing you know in iRobot, I mean, he was quite clear about uh, his. Um, uh, notion of the role of the robots and the robots could only serve humans they never harm humans I mean so his his laws of robots were yeah, three fabulous laws. yeah exactly and so so if we can actually follow those going forward uh, I think that they'll be hugely advantageous for for supporting humans in everything that we're doing and they and they can't be used in in uh, combat now now how we feel that you know how we do that I don't know but uh, that's that's where we're headed So. Yeah, one of those big things I know that, again, you've been really uh, helping us all focus on is the importance of, of uh, thinking about AI as augmenting human mm -hmm. intelligence. Right. And that, I think, probably, you know, it's part of the Asimov. Yeah, I don't, I don't use the notion at all. I think the notion of artificial intelligence is a false classification. I mean, whatever we're building is helping us computationally to compute more things more quickly in ways that we don't really want to waste our time doing or we can't actually do. And so they're augmenting us. So each right. of these are devices or tools that augment us in the same way that, you know, you, you, you don't call your vision artificial when you're wearing glasses, you right. call it augmented. It's, right. it's performing a function to b get the light into the right shape and to focus it in a way for, for you to work. So this is just another one of those technologies. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, obviously uh, here at ASU, you know, over the last 21 years uh, that you've been leading the university, you know, we've been focusing very much on innovation, but one of the things that's always been of interest to me is how you've projected the importance of an innovative mindset, not just products that are innovative, but an yeah. innovative mindset. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's, not, it's not about about an individual thing. It's about this notion of constantly working and striving to innovate in all things. So the innovation might be in how to help your kid to learn uh, better or more or more broadly. It might be how to uh, innovate your, your own yard in terms of not using any water or less water. I mean, innovation has to be a constant mindset. If you just accept, in, in nature, if you just accept the status quo, you will be defeated. Yeah. Uh, entropy, uh, the concept of entropy, not just physical entropy, but social entropy will defeat you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, at, at the same time, one of the things that has come along with the way you have framed uh, innovation for ASU has uh, been in the sort of what if we actually, and, and there are a whole bunch of huge initiatives that yeah. are underway that are, are essentially uh, you know, helping us to understand the opportunity to always be thinking about what comes next. And I don't know, you want to share some of the things that are sort of top of mind? Uh, well, for so you well, where, where, where we operate is under the following notion. So we think that all of us are endowed with an unbelievable supercomputer between our two ears, uh, one of the most complicated, if not the most complicated object in the known universe. That supercomputer then is underpowered uh, in the sense of what it's doing. What we're looking at is how do we use social innovation, organizational innovation, technological innovation on a continuing and ongoing basis to hugely accelerate the, the potential of each human to be uh, maximized.
you want to just sort of share like how you came to sort of the idea of learning through discovery and exploration and the work that you've been leading uh, with uh, Walter Parks uh, on Dreamscape as well, an example of well, that. So, kind of so stuff. there, what we realized was that um, there were there were boundaries to learning that that we hadn't been able to come past. So the, the teaching of math and the teaching of science, for instance, is uh, in its present form of teaching is only discernible at the level necessary to become literate by less than half the population. Right. And so we, therefore we have a serious learning problem because of the way that people that master those subjects teach those subjects because not all of us have that same exactly. kind of uh, mental framework. Yep. So in Dreamscape Learn, this joint venture between us and the Hollywood company Dreamscape Immersive, we figured out how to um, enable technologies, to enable storytelling, to enable learning, to activate certain parts of the mind, the parts that you feel when you go to the movies, the emotions that you feel when, you, when you're involved in a movie as if you're there watching it. Ask yourself how many times have you seen anybody cry in a, in a, uh, a biology <laughs> lab, and the, the answer is never. Right. How, exactly. do you, how do you find Other than failing, of course. Yeah, but how do you find an emotional connection? Right. So in our case, you know, we're looking for this emotional connection. Right. And so Dreamscape Learn allows us to use an advanced technology, advanced storytelling, advanced pedagogy, bring all these things together. What we're doing now wasn't even possible five years ago, and we've already had 10,000 students demonstrate massive learning outcome enhancements right. uh, through what we've been able to do through the Dreamscape Learn uh, technologies. So, so one of the big things that, uh, you know, again, uh, we've uh, just announced, uh, you, you've uh, shared with the uh, Board of Regents is the development of uh, a new ASU health initiative. Yeah. Um, How does that sort of fit into the big picture? So it's interesting. So, so when I first got here, people said over and over and over, you need to start a medical school, you need to do this, you need that. I said, no. What we really need to do first is build the most innovative university in the country that has people working together and disciplines that are fused together and people that are capable of working together and new kinds of technologies. And then, and then at that point, we might think about what we could do differently to attack some of these problems that we have in health outcomes. So what we have now launched is an initiative called ASU Health, which takes the entirety of the university and we'll be launching a new medical school built around engineering. Uh. We'll be launching a new public health technology school built around large-scale solutions using technologies to enhance life outcomes. We'll be launching the uh, Arizona uh, Health Observatory where we'll be tracking and monitoring and assessing and, and helping people to have better life outcomes. And so all these things we're now capable of because we have this hugely innovative, hugely intellectually fused uh, uh, intellectual community able to build something other than all the things that were built in the past. And so not to take away from all the other medical schools course, that exist, uh, yeah, they're course. all fantastic. Yeah. They're necessary but insufficient. And they are also demonstrating that they are by themselves inadequate. Yeah. How would we have such poor outcomes on a national basis with our health outcomes if everything was hunky-dory? Wow. Everything isn't hunky-dory. We need completely new ways of doing things. And that's what we're now able to do. And the ASU Health uh, thing that we're working on is a way for us to do that. And, and so, like, how do you think about, for example, the public health IT uh, initiative? Like, what are some of the health outcomes that you think might well be improved as a result of us fusing together all of the you know, well, intellectual and, and uh, sort of uh, insights that we have about working with the community? So, so I, I wear a small, inexpensive, wearable device. Uh, called not, just, a, not just one, right? Yeah, I, I have more than one, but this one. <laughs> okay. uh, this is a Fitbit, which is owned by Google. I have n I've worn one of these for nine years. I have nine years of data. Let me tell you, both from my own analysis and my physician's analysis of this, this the data that's gathered from this crude device right. is unbelievably predictive and unbelievably demonstrative of what's actually going on with me. My heart rate at night when I'm sleeping, the amount of sleep that I'm getting, the type of sleep that I'm getting, uh, the amount of steps that I'm taking, all these things are really, really important. And if we had more data and people more plugged in and people looked at it as something other than a joke right. uh, or a game, we can have huge, huge, huge positive outcomes for school kids, for families, for people going through stresses and strains and so forth and so on. And so this is really the, the, the kind of thing that we need. It's kind of interesting how quickly, right, this kind of just becomes normal, yeah. right? I mean, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think at the beginning for a lot of folks, it's kind of a, 
a kind of a, sort of a mental uh, framing challenge of kind of giving giving control over to. Uh, oh, a part of that is, I mean, we give control over to all kinds of things. I mean, already you just don't even realize it. So, so people say, no, no genetically engineered foods. I'm like, <laughs> uh, there are no non genetically engineered food. Every every vegetable and every plant we eat has been engineered by humans. Right in one way or another for in some cases like garbanzo beans you know for for 10,000 years plus yeah yeah and it's uh, it, you know it's interesting obviously uh, you know we have all kinds of autonomous technologies in our lives mm. uh, and whether it's trains obviously the planes we fly are large, yeah. largely done this way and this is kind of it seems like a, a, a new frontier and I love the way you started by saying you know these this is really an opportunity to look into uh, sort of the future of being able to support transportation for different kinds of people yeah. who are homebound, maybe yeah. all of a sudden, you know, they can call one of these. And oh, well, or an elderly person that you know, you know, the, the their son or daughter isn't around and they need to be taken around. And I mean, there's there's all kinds of uses for this. Yeah, I certainly know that. Like my daughter, who you know, uh, you know, sh she's uh, on the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. and her using this kind of a vehicle to give her more autonomy because mm -hmm. uh, oh. you know she doesn't actually have to interact with yeah. another right. human so that she doesn't know in, just put in data that's and that's it, it. Yeah. and can take her to the grocery very store very simple instruction single buttons that's it yeah. yeah i think the other thing that's been quite interesting is that the machine is now gathering not only information to help us with a safe ride but also interestingly enough uh, uh gathering data about the uh, traffic around it and mm. it can actually be reporting that in phoenix for example overwhelmingly people are speeding all the oh, time really? yeah <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. i hadn't noticed, yeah, I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> there's sparky yeah. waiting for us <laughs> all right well this is good all right thanks well thanks lot. michael all it right. was great yeah appreciate it see you a little bit later